the bottom right of the map, the player who is going to be introduced first here. It's the Protoss for LGIM. LGIM first. Taking down the Marine Prince, finds himself up against the King now. To the top left of the map, in blue, the Prime player. Marine King Prime. King of Marines. Definitely got something planned here. We'll likely see a... Oh! He sends an SCV to scout early. He could go for a proxy, but I don't think that's his plan here. That's not what I expected. He wants to know if first is going Nexus first or not. Um, which he should expect, but first actually goes gate. First. Oh, wow, wow. Do you hear that? Yeah. A lot of Marine King fans here uh, at the studio today. This is weird. Um, I think he's just going for a CC first yeah. as a scout out now. He wants to scout whether first goes Nexus first, and it's good that he did scout this because, you know, most process will go Nexus first on this map. Uh, he didn't, though. Remember that this is the map where Marine King the last time lifted his commands and, uh, and flew it to yes. the gold mineral patches, which was really, really epic. An interesting idea that in the end did not work out for him, but it was a nice approach, a very Marine King-esque approach something that he loves to do and he starts here with the CC first as expected already spotted by first yeah and you know he's not even really able to get that much harass off because obviously the probe was scouted before it got yeah. to the CC playing a little bit ring around the rosy and that's it for now but yeah scouting information out there so first knows what's going on Marine King has an SCD in his opponent's base too sees everything that's happening here spots the positions of the pilots and is just now trying to find out what exactly he's doing there he didn't see a cc uh, sorry a nexus just yet so it's just having a look if the car was built earlier which is not the case here comes the nexus and marine king knows about it you know i'm actually a little bit disappointed we didn't see an ebay block there that could have been excellent he had the SCV there obviously it took a few hits but that would have really really messed up first build and when you're on a map like this and you scout that early you definitely want to ebay block if you can because as we talked about earlier with the pylon block, when we saw Sleep come out on this yep. map, it's it's just, with the gold patches and the, the geyser back there, it makes such a big difference on this map. The way Icarus works is just so that it's very difficult to take this third base. It's so far away from the natural and the main base and so difficult to defend. So it would definitely have been worth it for him to uh, go for the eBay block here, especially since the only thing that First can do about it is send out a few probes to uh, just deal with the SCV. It's not like he has already a stock or a little on the map. That yeah, I mean, imagine out. imagine the situation that occurs if suddenly Marine King has a command center first that was not delayed, and then he blocks it, and you've got no one in gas, and you have to then start a zealot, and you're like, oh, this is terrible. It would have given us so many advantages, but he decided not to. Yeah, what we also see here is a third barrack, so a lot of bioaggression here coming from Marine King. It looks like he's really trying to be aggressive with this. Yeah, and, and oddly enough, a robotics coming down for first, and he's just going to play his macro style. I just think that on a map like this, Marine King's choice may end up uh, winning out. Marine King is approaching this in a very interesting way, getting his stim out early, having the three barracks. He can get so many Marines now and just walk across the map and then it comes down to force fields and to positioning. I also don't think that first is really going to scout this in time. With the early robotics he can send out an observer, but any kind of unit scout into the main base is probably not going yeah, to work. Absolutely not. Uh, he doesn't even have a sentry ready yet for hallucination scouts. so. The, the problem, too, is when the Observer sees this, he's going to be like, oh, the first thing he's going to think is, I shouldn't have gone Robo before Gateways. <laughs> and there's not much he can do about it except start an Immortal. He does start one now. So it looks like he wants to, rather than using this to play standard, wants to be aggressive with Immortals. And this, when you have these two clashes of units, things can get a little bit weird. Things can get very ugly, especially for first here. Because the problem really is early upgrade, attack upgrade, early stim doesn't have the second tech lab that would allow him to go into the, the combat shell too. But that's a lot of marines that he's building and he also is heading now into marauders. So, I don't know, Marine King has a very, very aggressive force that yeah. he's building. And some of the strengths of uh, this type of attack is hitting before stem because usually uh, yeah. a Terran player will get stem much later than this, but he's going to such a fast stem that this is going to obviously be ready long before the attack starts and combat shields will even start right away now too, so... First also doesn't know what's going on, he skipped the observer because he wants to have those immortals out as fast as possible. I mean, the guy is chrono boosting the hell out of his robotics. He has two immortals already and is getting the third now. But combat shield is, as you already said, now on the way, so we will probably see that being completed before the attack hits. And still is going to be there. 
Uh, if first doesn't have perfect force fields, his force is going to take be taken apart in seconds. One thing he can try to do, which takes more time, which Medivax will be out if he does this, is to go to the rocks. Um, but that's just it's going to take too long for him to kill it. He has three immortals, yeah, they kill rocks really fast, but not fast enough. Observer coming out now too, so he can have some more of that high ground vision if he loses his mothership core. I don't know about this, this one. This is really about position now. I mean, plus one is going to be done. Here comes the Marine moving in. Uh, so far, first does a decent job with... Ah, oh, he showed Stim. But so far, first does a good job with hiding this. But just imagine Marine King coming in from a good position where first can't force field properly. Then suddenly there is so much DPS with all those Marines, the Marauders, Combat Shield, Stim, plus one attack. First? First Medivac's on the way, but he does not have more than one bunker and he's not even in position here. He hit this so well, bunker is gone already. But here we go, a lot of bio units and this is down to the force fields now. Here comes Marine King, he knows that this is a problem for him to move down the ramp with the sentries being there. No and he's hesitation. Supply now. Yeah, no hesitation on those depots as soon as he saw the attack coming. Before these depots were even dead, he started three additional ones knowing this is going to be a problem. It's just so hard to attack into this. Yeah. Combat shields are done. His army is much stronger, Marine Kings that is, but the problems are the force fields. Yeah. With good force fields, first can make this happen, and here comes Marine King, the first fields are good. Here comes Stim, he's trying to take out as much as possible the two medivacs that he has, doing a great job with the evacuation. No time warp, his Mothership Core just now has enough energy for it. First looks a little bit desperate here, he does go into those rocks, now he's going to kill more depots which will slow down the production. That's great, then he can supply block Marine King once again, that's exactly what he wants to do. Good force field, he the blocks the field. ramp! Ah, uh, not quite. Really well done, but here comes the force of Marine King, at least half of it, and the recall. I think that Marine King is in such a better position right now after this attack. Well, Marine King has not lost too much. He lost a few supply depots, that's all. Didn't lose a lot of his army. And he's the one who is already, here, or will be on 1-1 one, one before first starts his first attack upgrade. Yeah. So the upgrade lead that Marine King has is a really good one. And for the Protoss player, it's going to take a while to get the range upgrade out and enough Colossi. Killing these rocks is nice, but Marine King does not rewall it, so he can send these Zealots in here for a little bit of harassment. Uh-oh, this is a bit problematic. Loses a medevac right away, almost a second one. Yeah, donations, but here comes the bio army. The force fields are decent, but with a good Sutter step, he can take down a lot of the Zealots. Oh, and meanwhile, the Zealots kill a lot of SCVs at the natural, and first, he may have just actually turned this game totally yeah. around on its head with a good engagement. Marine King not paying attention here to his army. Marine King missing one of the pylons that first put down and the Zealots doing quite the number on the mineral line, taking down eight of the harvesters and delaying mining at the natural. First is now trying to move into a good position and this guy is now 30 supply up. And he still has that pylon to reinforce. And the Mothership Core, don't forget. Also the Colossus. Marine King has the upgrade advantage, but with the position that he has, force fields are still strong on the ramp, and we now have a long-range unit with the first Colossus in the game. Yeah, and the second one is, is on its way, so he has range finishing now. And, you know, this is, if he catches those units on the ramp or in this choke point, which he likely will, this could be disastrous for Marine King. This is really bad for Marine King right now. Two Colossi already, he's starting to build Vikings. But first, just has so much time to take down the supply depots, supply block his opponent, make sure that there are not too many Vikings getting out there, and he can target down the, uh, the uh, command center if he wants to. Yeah, he's just using the, the force fields and the range on those Colossi. But you know, the longer he gives Marine King, the more time he does have to get those Vikings. This is a very thin timing window he's got, and he's got to be careful of that mothership core. I don't think it makes a difference, though, Wolf. I really don't think it makes a huge difference. Marine King just can't move into good position. He's really struggling to get a position against first. This army is in the perfect spot. Look at his micro on those Vikings, though. He is really trying to, to pick away at those shields on the Colossi. But he's losing his production facilities. He's losing the tech labs. There are three Colossi by now. And he's pulling even SCVs. Once again, first moving down the ramp. Here comes the Mother Shikov with the time warp. Where are the force fields? Warps are good here. There are some force fields. He traps out the bio army. A boost in by Marine King. Blink is getting closer to being done, so he can just start to blink up the ramp and, and get some good angles on these flying units. 30 army supply ahead for first. He has such a lead in the game now. Marine King trying to close the gap. The Vikings in a good position here. Yeah, but for how long, you know, with the Stalkers moving forward here, Blink is almost done. Another Colossus walking across the map as we speak, and a Zealot runs in here, killing more and more Harvesters. The Harvester count down to 29, losing even more. A big problem for Marine King. Every single time he's trying to catch a break, there's another Zealot in his mineral line at the natural. 
And he, he didn't actually kill it. The upgrades are so good for him, but there's another Zealot already heading towards the SCVs. And it's just a matter of time until first can overrun his opponent. Only the upgrades keep him Marine King in the match. Yeah, and I think he's about to lose it. Plus two, almost done, but not done in time. Too last many Vikings. Colossi. Yeah, last Viking's dead. Too many Colossi. Marine King is down to 40 supply against 113. First is pushing his way up the ramp in the main base. GG. You know, that was... Uh, that's how you can lose a game with one bad engagement in the middle of the map. Yeah. It was a matter of position that we saw. We had Marine King with a better army, even at the first attack, and then first just wasn't a position where he took down as many supply depots as possible, making sure that Marine King couldn't get any units out. As soon as things started to look a bit grim, he recalled out and went for a second attack. And just the position at the ramps and at the choke points, that was what won first the game here. Good force fields, good time warps, making sure that Marine King could never use the superior army when the Terran player was actually ahead in army supply. Yeah, that was that was a rough loss. That was his map choice, you know, and his strat. And uh, first, knocked him down, getting a little bit uh, dry on the time. eyes after yeah. that game. Getting his eye drops in and Marine King in a very bad spot, not only losing his third round match in Kode, but now also losing twice in a row in the GSTL without taking a single point. It's one of those games, too, that you you feel like you were going to win. You know, he had a lot of advantages, and he held that first push really, really well, but then, you know, he just wasn't paying attention to his medevacs. <laughs> he lost almost two, and... Uh, Maru is so cute at times. I feel like he's holding on to that bag even tighter now. Yeah, he just wants someone to cuddle. Nobody wants to. Look how many people we have in the studio today. Yep. There's a mass amount. Today's a holiday, so there's a lot of people free. Don't have to go to work, but... That's one of the big problems that we usually have, that most of the people are still working or at school when the GSTL actually takes place. So today, being a holiday, a lot of people in the studio. But Prime starting to be in trouble once again. And they were really trying to catch a break here. And with Maru winning the first game, it looked good. But now first already taking down two Terran players. And what do you do? Do you send out Bian, the third turn player in a row, the strongest opponent? Do you risk it with the PvP? I think it has to be Creator. Yeah, I think so. Um, you don't want to drop your last Terran, and then he, if he loses, and then you have to rely on a PvP before you can even get started. Yeah. It's time to put the Pros out now. Belshire Vestige is the map. And uh, I'm, uh, I'm excited to see who they're going to pick. I, I think it's got to be Creator. Belshire Vestige is a map that they could send a Terran on, they could send Beyond out here, but... Uh, just feel bad for the Prime team. Yeah, I mean, this has been rough for them, but, you know, it just comes down to a little bit of predictability at yeah. times. I feel part of it is their own fault for just not being ready with a good strategy in the team matches. I don't think you can blame it on him in the match against LGIM, where it's very difficult to approach and where you really don't want to send out those youngsters. But in a lot of the games that they played in the past, they could have approached it a little bit differently and taking a few calculated risks to get ahead in the series. Now they are already down three matches in the GSTL and they are in a position where I, I don't think they can't risk it. I mean, if they put out a new player and risk it and he loses, then they won't be able to reach the playoffs. But if they rely on their good players, they are too predictable. It's They they waited too long, you know. Yeah. They really have put themselves into position where now they're just four players, four faces, everybody knows. And it's super easy to repair. You know, the way the last game went was just a bit unfortunate. That wasn't really about the player. It was more about the strategies. But going forward here, the IM coach is uh, sitting there going, all right, is it going to be Creator? Is it going to be Beyond? Which one comes out first? And then and he's like, already going, we have already figured it out. Especially Marine King seems to be a bit in a slump these yeah, days. Yeah, definitely. It's a big problem for them. He was one of the main forces that was driving the team in the past. Now it seems to be more shifting towards Beyond. But Marine King uh, being in such a bad shape, and not taking wins, that is really something that does a number on them. Bjorn, it's the third Terran player in a row. And uh, first is like, well, I'll smash another one. Now I'm not quite sure why he was hiding his face here. He did a great job so far. But yeah, it's Bjorn, third Terran in a row. And Gerard, looking a little bit lost here. Yeah. But as I said, I feel the time for experiments is over. That's something that they could have done in the first four matches when they were facing I would say weaker teams, which is really weird to put it that way. Right. And I think that if they lose today against LGIM, then it's time to give those youngsters some uh, exposure because the problem is 
Let's be quite frank here. If they lose today, I don't see them going into the playoffs. Absolutely. They would have to win all their matches and with the same four players, I just don't see that happening against the teams that are left to, for them to face. So I think the only thing that they can really do in this season is thinking about the season as being over. They won't reach the players if they lose here and then send out their younger players to give them the exposure that they need. Yeah, you're right. But the match is not over yet. Maybe Bjan can turn things around because we mentioned this. Jan is right now the strongest player on the roster. Yeah, he is basically their ace. They don't want to do a Pros versus Protoss, so they dodge that for now. Uh, but before we go into Belshire Vestige, we have a five-minute break. So we'll see you guys after the break. <laughs> 